Hey guys, are you here? And today I am playing some WMS with uh, my friend Best World TKO and Losa, aka Mame the Warrior. Um, tried a couple games as Fury uh, Frost for your Warrior Frost Mage, but it didn't go too well, so we switched to Arms, and the games were much much easier um, when we were playing with an Arms Warrior, mainly because of the Mortal Strike. In this first clip here, I just wanted to show you guys a pretty awesome kill we got onto the Priest. Kind of just started with Orb Cleave, everything down. Ebonbold Blink to him with the Fear to keep him in place. Into a Belf, into a Half Belf. Spell Steal the Shield, and boom, he goes down. Pretty awesome game there. Um, next game, hopping into um, an Arcane Windwalker H Palomir. Had a pretty cool ending to this game that I wanted to show you guys. Um, but yeah, I don't think WMS is actually a very good comp or the best comp for Frost Mage, but it's just who I had on and I wanted to play. Um, I think it would, Warrior Mage would be much better with a Resto Druid, maybe even better with an H Pal. Maybe even better with something like a Monk, so I don't know if, if Arsham is that good at all for this comp, but we we had fun, we made it work, uh, we had some strengths like Sky Fury, um, it's just that Shamans do go Oom, um, Shamans can die, it's, there's a lot of negatives to playing with the Shaman, but, you know, we had some really good games, I think we got up to almost 2800 and um, had, a, had a good time. So here we are, I kind of want to talk about, sometimes about picking a kill target, because I saw a um, someone in the in the comments actually ask uh, Zaryu, how do you pick your kill target? And as a mage, there's no just guaranteed kill target ever. It's always based on positioning, trinkets, and uh, cooldowns. So what I mean by that is if if someone is you know generally a good kill target, say like a shaman, like an enhanced shaman is usually a good kill target. But if the enhanced shaman is behind a pillar, and he has his trinket available. And he has his wall um, still available. And his partner is, say, a warrior who isn't normally that good of a kill target. Warriors are pretty tanky because of defensive stance. But, you know, the warrior might be hovering at 70, 80% health. He's overextended. Perhaps he has no trinket. Um, and he has, uh, you know, maybe he used rally on a shaman earlier, something like that. Well, there it is. The warrior is a great kill target, so you should go on the warrior. At least go on the warrior until the shaman comes back out. Um, so it's really about just reading the game, reading your surroundings, and kind of telling, all right, what is the best kill target based on cooldowns and trinkets and positioning? So kind of keep those three things in mind when, you, when trying to pick a kill target. Um, there are classes that are just squishier than others. For example, here when we're fighting this, it's pretty hard. Um, the monk is very, uh, not tanky, but he can port, you know, every time we hit him, he can port this mage is arcane, so every time we hit the mage, he has a blink available, pretty much, mage is, arcane mages have like four blinks, kind of, so he can just blink all over the place, um, which makes arcane mages a very difficult target to actually stick onto, and monks, you know, both of them are very difficult to stick onto, so the only target we can really, you know, hit is paladin, but we don't really want to turn to pally, because that's not how a warrior frost mage works. You can't really train healers as our comp. So we're kind of stuck between, we're bouncing between the, the mage and the monk, trying to see um, what we can get done. Pally goes into a fear, cast a ring of frost out, because I tried sheeping and I got locked on it. Get that full ring of frost out. The um, monk does trinket karma there, and so I just swap on over to the mage and the mage gets sacked. We are forced to use Link, which isn't the worst thing ever. Um, I lock out the pally here. We swap over to the Monk, Monk no Trinket, no Karma, and the Monk goes down. I'll actually replay the ending really quick here for you guys um, in a second to show how this kind of went down. So I slow mode it down. The Pally has a fast cast available and pops Aura Mastery. I see that, so I focus Spell Steal the Aura Mastery and kick out the Holy Light. So that was freaking awesome. And then since I focus Spell Steal, kick him out, we can just swap on over to the Monk. He has no Trinket, no Karma available, and that's pretty much it. Um, pretty awesome game there, so I wanted to show you guys that um, ending. But yeah, hopping into another game here against Joxie Dylan and Junash. Very, very good. I think it's the, they're the highest rated alliance team in NA, I think. I could be wrong, but I think so. And they're uh, very good players. We start with a full fear here onto the priest uh, with my orb, icy veins, trying to get a ton of damage out. And the, kind of the general strategy that we we're going for is shockwave into capstuns. Uh, something like that, or if we don't have a shockwave, just capstun. 
if we don't have a cap stun to shockwave etc should i go for like double stuns into orb comet storm deep um ice nova kind of combos so similar very similar to what i've been doing in windwalker mage except instead of leg sweep we have that shockwave so yeah pretty pretty cool and in the meantime i'm going to be going for sheeps or counter spells or some type of cc onto the priest so I come out on my block. One, I already watched through this game. One mistake that I do think I make here is that I don't cold snap for about two minutes um, from now. So I, I ice block, but I don't cold snap, which is bad. Um, you want to cold snap pretty much as soon as you can, because uh, if you don't cold snap immediately, you can die in a stun. You can't cold snap in stuns anymore, like last expansion. So if you don't cold snap as soon as you can, you can actually die in a stun without being able to block. Um, another reason it's bad is because when I eventually do cold snap, then my cold snap cooldown starts ticking, right? Um, I should cold snap right when I get out of my first block. You can't use it in block either, but right when I get out of my first block so that the cooldown starts to come back up um, as soon as possible. Assuming you're not going to be able to last, you know, four, or four minutes until your normal ice block is back up. Um, this is a better strategy to kind of go just cold snap immediately. Let that cold snap come back up so you don't die in random stuns. Um, I do cast Blizzard a lot against uh, Cleaves like this. I'm not really sheeping Hunter. Obviously, I can't sheep the Feral. Um, I'm not really sheeping DPS at all because I'm kind of just trying to tank them and um, cast Blizzard and cleave them with my orb and all my other AoE damage. Um, something else I want to talk about is I am not playing Ring of Frost. I'm Frigid Winds, and that's the 15% extra slow. And I usually like that against double melee just because it helps me kite them. I feel like I don't need Ring, really. I would much rather have the melee 15% slower when they're attacking me, so I can really just kite them, you know, 15% easier, I guess. Uh, helps out definitely quite a bit. I lock out uh, Priest and Shadow Mint here, just doing more damage to the Hunter. Trying to build up Icicles, trying to, you know, keep down that that blizzard as much as possible it's it's very difficult to eat traps this expansion i'm not even sure if it's really worth i don't think stacking on my shaman is that good because then they can just kick so i'm trying to stay in the corner um you might wonder wonder why i'm not playing on the pillar and that's just because if i'm playing on the pillar it's difficult to cc priest if i'm playing on the corner um the, they're both in the open or they can't run to the pillar and um yeah, it's easier to get a kill if they're not on the pillar. So mages like to play in the open. Um, people playing against mages like to play in the pillar. You see there, I just sheeped that revived pet. Or my warrior kicked it, I kicked it, and then I sheeped it. So we got a lot of interrupts down that revived pet. Kind of keeping the hunter, you know, just trying to trying to get his pet back up because we did kill it with all that cleave. Trying to get some type of CC here under the priest. Um, orbing both DPS. Uh, priest is around the corner a little bit. I kind of see him right there. Poke my eye towards him, get kicked by Feral, get a blink sheep here onto the priest, full sheep on the priest here, cast a blizzard on both DPS, cast a resheep here onto the priest, in a minute, yep, there it is, resheep onto the priest, huge damage on both of them, the Feral and the Hunter are both solo, belt the priest into a quarter sheep, and it looks like the Feral and the Hunter go down um, at the same time so that was a cool little double kill there at high mmr hope you guys enjoyed these games thumbs it up if you like this wms gameplay thumbs the video down if you didn't let me know in the comments guys what you guys want to see for next time i do really read it all i mean a lot of the stuff i even talked about in this video were questions you guys had in the comments from previous videos so yeah as always guys don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys next time peace